obviously you know I've got the E30 and obviously you know that we're engine swapping it, right? I'm actually on the way to pick up the donor car. Wish me luck. Hopefully it's not blown up, yeah. Hopefully that's good. Oh, it's here, it's here, <laughs> it's coming. Let's, uh, oh my God, here we go, let's see if it runs. It's only got 207,000. Barely ran in that. Oh, oh my God, I'm nervous. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. We are in Essex, in Essex, all oh, right, Essex. Uh, we're down in Essex for a few reasons. Um, the first reason is I'm actually moving back down here again. <laughs> I know, right? Um, people are probably thinking, what the hell? You literally lived down there for three years, said you hated it, uh, and then said you moved back, and said you moved back, and you said you was happy, and, and yeah. I kind of like moved back on like false pretenses. I thought that when I moved back up north, that everything would be half price as it was when I moved back down here. That wasn't the case. It was like just as expensive up north to rent units and rent uh, places. Maybe not as expensive, but I'll get on to the next point. Obviously, I thought I'd see all my friends again, all the friends that I left. I, I thought I'd see all them again. And the, the case is I barely even saw any of the friends. Like, in fact, there was a good friend who I didn't even see once. I actually saw my friends from up north more when I lived down south. And it kind of just made me realize all the friends that I left down south. You know, I, I kind of felt like I made a new life myself down south, and I, and then when I got north, I kind of like didn't realize how much of a, of a life I had down here, which was a lot. I think I've got more friends down here now, uh, and also I do a lot of freelance social media stuff, and there's a lot more people down here I can work for. So it's more expensive, but in theory, I have more work down here. So, uh, and then also I've been offered a uh, a unit down here with AMD tuning, so I'm going to be moving into there. Obviously, I already told you that in the last video. Um, so yeah, we're going to be moving down to Essex. So I've been down here looking at looking at places. Um, so that's been my last two days, and I've put my name down on an apartment, which is absolutely beautiful. It's expensive, but it's absolutely beautiful, and I would really annoy. I'd be, I would have been really frustrated myself if uh, I didn't go for it. So I've gone for it. So that's going to be the next. The, that's going to be. Hopefully not, but probably is going to be a stress over the next week or two. Sorting out all that, but it is what it is. Anyway, the reason we're here for this video is that obviously you know I've got the E30, and obviously you know that we're engine swapping it, right? So I'm actually on the way to pick up the donor car right as we as we speak. I've been looking for a donor car for about two or three weeks now, um, and I couldn't find one that like fit all the things I needed um, there was one but the guy just like wasn't replying or it was like taking a week to reply between messages and I did actually want that car um, but we found one on Copart <laughs> of course we fucking did we found one on Copart and we bid on it and we won it so I got this for a lot cheaper than I was going to buy the other one but the only thing with Copart is you don't know what state the car is in I've it's a cat U which is worrying, I'd rather it be like a Cat N or a Cat S, so I know it's been written off for a reason, but a Cat U is that it's been privately sold to Copart, and I'm not sure why. Um, the only, which it, which usually is worrying, because I don't know if Copart do many checks with their Cat U cars. Greenlight have been mugged, mugged off when they bought a Cat U car, they bought a Civic, um, and someone, um, took the Type R engine out and put a 1.6 non VTEC in there and then sold it as a Type R. So, so we've got it for 525, which comes to 770 pound with fees. Yeah, all right, it's an LS400. Of course it is. I said we're gonna do a 1UZ swap. I couldn't decide between a 1UZ and a 3UZ. I was hearing mixed things. Um, there was less of the 3UZs, which is like the GS430s. It's the 4.3 liter V8. It's the newer version of the 1UZ. Um, but ultimately, the, the deciding factor was the three UZs have like 20 more horsepower and they've got VVTI and stuff, but they've got weaker blocks and there's not as much aftermarket parts for them. So I was like, we'll just get a 1U. It's been done loads before. It's a stronger engine. I'm trying way too much. We're going down to Kuba now. We're going to go and meet Kuba. We're going to go to Kuba's unit because Kuba's letting us borrow his trailer. Thank you so much, Kuba. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll pick you up when we're at his. Trailer up. Thanks, Kuba. My door handle's broke again. I've got to fucking eat it. These cars are shit, mate. Right, thank you, mate. I'll return it later. Wish me luck with my cat you co-fart car. 
<laughs> Hopefully it's not blown up, yeah. Right, so we're here at Copart while we're waiting. I actually bought a uh, BMW gearbox. So this is a E36 um, 30, uh, 330D gearbox. I actually thought it was a 5-speed in this. I would want to go for the GS5 gearbox. But this is a GS6. This is a 6-speed. Uh, it shouldn't, doesn't really make much of a difference. I've just heard good things about the 5-speeds. The um, but also, I've heard good things about these. I think they can take like 600 foot-pound of torque. So we're not going to go anywhere near that. Uh, so we got this, which is perfect. This is going to go on the 1UZ which is going to be in the ms 400 probably coming out any minute now to be honest um and i have no idea if this runs well actually i do know if it runs i've been told it runs and drives um so hopefully that's good. oh it's here it's here <laughs> it's coming there she is oh yeah what a beast look at that so here it is <laughs> here it is ls 400 one uz so yeah uh, not looking very happy for itself but here it is it's obviously got a leaking sunroof that door doesn't open the outside uh, i have put my key in see if it's um got got any power but the battery's totally dead here it is <laughs> so yeah <laughs> look the battery is uh battery is totally totally got loads of keys four keys with it i hope it's not like so totally, battery's totally dead. Oh yeah, that's what we came here for. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Let's do some crits. It got coolant in there. Yes, yeah, got coolant, which is good news. It's a good start. Let's have a look at the oil cap. We should be doing this when we're not here, to be fair. But yes, no milk. Right. Let's uh, let's strap her up. And let's. Uh, Let's get home and let's, uh, let's start work on it. Right, so we are back at the unit. The LS400 is here. It's an absolute boat towing this thing. It felt horrible. I was like, is my tyre flat or something? I think it was a mixture of the wind and just... It's an absolute land yacht. Um, so what we're going to do is we've got a jumper pack here. First of all, we're going to check the oil just to make sure it has got oil. And then we're going to give it a fire up. This door doesn't open from this side. Um, and then we'll give it a fire up and see if it starts it fucking stinks in here it honestly stinks so bad let's uh, oh my god here we go let's see if it runs oh come on it did say on copart runs and drives so they do put power to them you know and check if they run and drives so obviously they get more money if they do run and drive so it is running and driving the bonnet doesn't want to stay up at the minute so let me just get something to hold the bonnet up right it has oil in fact it's over full but that looks pretty fresh that oil that oil like doesn't look bad at all come on come on right let's put the back jumper on it let's fire her up right we have power oh oh my god i'm nervous we've got a quarter tank of fuel as well oh, are we ready Whoa! <laughs> she fucking loves it! Listen to her! You can barely even hear it! Oh yeah! That is good news! That is very good news! I mean it's low mileage! It's only got 207,000! Barely ran in that! Yes! Right, I'm gonna just let her idle for a little bit because she's probably not been started in uh <laughs> Probably not started in a very long time, so this is a good start. She runs. I'm gonna go over in a shortly why we've actually got a full car and not just bought a one UZ. Um, and I'm gonna fully explain why we've uh, bought a full car. So why? Right. So she. Oh fuck it. Out. When I put the window down, it died. So I put the jumper back on. So. She doesn't like she doesn't want to she doesn't want to idle anymore. She keeps wanting to die. So that might be like a battery or an alternator issue or something. But it's fine. Let's see if she gets off. So she starts. Let's see if she'll Oh she's driving! I mean the brakes feel horrible. I've got a left foot brakes, so I've got to keep the revs up. Oh we're, we're going. Yeah. She drives, she runs and she drives. 
There we go. <laughs> Oh yeah! Feel the power, boys. Can't. She's idling. Oh no! She, oh, she's idling. Oh, the idler just sits so low. Oh, fair enough. I thought it wasn't idling. No, it's just like it sits like three grand. What an engine! There she is, boys. <laughs> is she idling? Yeah, she loves it. Why have we bought a full car when we just need the engine? We've bought a full car because once we've bought a full car and it starts and it runs, I now know that it runs and it starts. Um, so when we put the engine in and if something isn't working or if something's not starting, I know that it's something I've done. Um, so it's good to have a baseline like this and we have everything. That is a running car. So everything in there, that engine now will now run. So if I put it in the E30 and it doesn't run or it's not starting or, or, or anything, I know it's something that I've done or it's not something I potentially missed off or not put back in. And this means we have absolutely everything. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the engine, we're gonna take the wiring loom, we're gonna take the key, and we're gonna take the LS400 clocks because there's absolutely nothing in the E30, nothing at all. So we're gonna take the battery, the fuse, oil, everything in there to make that car start, we're just gonna put in the E30. And it's literally as simple as that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to mark out the wiring loom. So everything that I don't need, we're gonna cut off. So we're gonna start with the interior. We're gonna take all the interior out um, and we're gonna just start. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug it. If it starts, I'm gonna cut it off. If I don't need it, I don't need it. Um, the main concern with mine is that it won't start without the automatic gearbox plugged in. So that's one thing we're gonna to have to consider. We're gonna to have to take out all the automatic gearbox plugs and then just hopefully it starts. If it doesn't start, we might have to get something, you know, clocked off the ECU or something like that. But hopefully it does. And then we can literally just cut every single wire that we don't need. And if we cut a wire and it doesn't, so if we unplug something and it doesn't start, then keep that. And we're gonna label absolutely everything. I'm, I'm, I did that with the with the motorbike engine, label everywhere, everywhere. I didn't do that with the Merc and we're having big issues with that now because we didn't label anything so we didn't realize we we're going to have to but with this we're going to use it all so I'm going to label everything so take it off mark it what is it where does it go or if we don't know where it is where it goes just put a letter and mark it up to the engine so this is going to be the end of this video guys uh, I'm actually going to start another video in a second and we're going to uh, we're going to start stripping everything out of this car I'm going to start stripping the wiring loom down because I actually want this shell to be scrapped in the next week so wiring loom engine out and then we can scrap everything else. Maybe keep some things that probably will, might sell, like the gearbox and the brakes and things like that. But everything else is just going to literally just get sent to a scrapyard. So I love you all. Thanks for watching. I hope you're excited for this. I am so excited. We'll see you in the next one.